We have nobody in this country vaccinated for coronavirus right now. So that if it goes through the public... the same vaccine could not work. You take a, a solid flu vaccine, you don't think that would have an impact or much of an impact on corona? No. Probably none. Uh, probably none. So this is no reason to panic at all. Since the early stages of the foreign outbreak, my administration has taken the most aggressive action in modern history to confront the spread of this disease. We moved very early. That was one of the decisions we made uh, that really turned out to be a, a, a lifesaver in a sense, big lifesaver. And I want to say that China seems to be making tremendous progress. Uh, their numbers are way down and uh, the numbers are way down. On Monday, I'll be meeting with the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world, actually. They'll be coming to the White House. So Daniel, let's talk about this. that same antiviral experience that Gilead has had decades to now to apply it to coronavirus. So we have a medicine called remdesivir, which is like a decade-long development that's, a, that's an antiviral used to treat uh, coronaviruses, the same viruses that uh, the same family of SARS and MERS, and we're hoping it has effect now against uh, COVID-19. So we know in vitro that it has very high effect. So you have a medicine that's already involved with the coronaviruses, yeah. and now you have to see if it's specifically for this. When uh, you, right. you can know that tomorrow, okay? So well, we have, we now, now the critical thing is to do clinical trials, and we're, right. in the, we're in the process. We have two clinical trials going on in China that were started uh, several weeks ago. There are uh, 400 patient trials each. Uh, they're getting close to halfway enrolled. They're enrolling very quickly. Here? Well, we don't know because they're double blind randomized trials. So we have to wait till the conclusion. We're trying to understand, as we all are with the epidemiology of this disease, wh wh where and when is the best place to treat. It's very so exciting. Get it it's done, exciting. Daniel. We're on. Don't disappoint us, Dan. You understand right. that? Yeah. Took it over the next few months. You think you could have a vaccine? Correct. Uh, we face two. But we face two. Yeah. We wouldn't have a vaccine. We'll have a vaccine to go and keep we testing. Yeah. And how long would that take? The phase two would take a few months before we can go into phase three. Oh, so you're talking within a, a year. Like I've been telling you. Yeah. Well, yeah. like, yeah. yeah. Lenny is talking about two months, right? <laughs> <laughs> Lenny is talking about two months, right? <laughs> <laughs> and we would be there in June. We will be there in June. We will, we will be there in June in, phase in a couple of months. I mean, I like the sound of a couple of months better, I must be honest. Wait, but when you say June phase one initiation, though, right? In June? Yeah. Not a completed vaccine. Yeah. Well, 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 if you have a vaccine, that would be ready for testing in phase one. But, but ready, to use, use, <clears throat> ready to use when, would you say? Ready to use in front of the public. I think for the next season. So assuming that the vaccine is well tolerated and safe and efficacious, as John said, um, then I think the question is, how do we work with the FDA to expedite that as fast as possible through some sort of fast track program to get it through phase two and three testing to get to so, quick. Like, so as quickly as possible? What do you say to that, Lenny? Look, I, I, I sense the cautiousness of uh, Dr. Fauci, and he's right to be cautious because vaccines have to be tested because there's precedent for vaccines to actually make diseases worse. And you really don't want to make it, you don't want to rush and treat a million people and find out you're making. 900,000 of them worse. Good idea. So, yeah, so that's why I think why Dr. Fauci is being a little bit cautious. I don't want to speak for him, but. Closely connected incredible. with, uh, I yeah. mean, uh, HIV, incredible. to be able to prevent and treat this disease is just extraordinary. So we're so. saying 10 years, but now we're into nine years because it could have been started earlier and somebody else didn't start it earlier, but we started it right away. Uh, and I'm now saying, I started off saying 10 years, now I'm down to nine years. Do you think by the end of nine years, uh, HIV is where? I hope you get eliminated in the developed Everything world. You I mean, we'll be eliminated. In because because we you did use the word hoax. Couldn't that cause some people to not take the precautionary steps because they are linking what you're saying when you use the word hoax in the context of coronavirus? Okay, so again, the hoax was used with respect to Democrats and what they were saying. It was a hoax, what they were saying. And that was very clear if you'd read the words. And I think you know that too. Uh, but we're doing really well very very professionally handled our country is prepared for any circumstance we hope it's not going to be a major circumstance it'll be a smaller circumstance but whatever the circumstances 
we're prepared. Uh, our plan is to start the U.S.-based clinical trials for COVID-19 vaccine in April of this year, followed by shortly thereafter uh, a trial in China and South Korea. There are a lot more infections in those areas. Um, we can give you an area too. <laughs> no, we can. I mean, you take, so, you take a look at Seattle again. We can give you an area. So, if you don't mind. Uh, we've been collaborating with. Uh, uh, U.S. agencies like DARPA, NIH. We collaborated with Dr. Birx uh, in HIV vaccines and many, many years ago. Um, uh, with existing uh, resources and capacity. Uh, tremendous amounts of supplies uh, are already on hand. Empty shelves greeted Costco customers trying to buy toilet paper, bottled water, disinfectant wipes, and rice. All gone. Media, would you like to ask any questions of any of the geniuses around the What economic stimulus measures are you considering to boost the economy as a result of the virus? Well, I guess the market's up today. Our country is very strong economically, as you know. Uh, but I think uh, I know we're in very strong shape, very strong shape financially. And, and, you know, I have to tell you, where would the public, what would the public think when you have so many? And that's taken routinely. And I was shocked to hear this. You know, three, four weeks ago, I said, well, how many people die a year from the flu out of this country? I think last year was 36 or 37,000 people. And I'm saying, wow, nobody knew that information. Worldwide, you just multiply it out times the world, right? I've heard very quick numbers, a matter of months, and I've heard pretty much a year would be an outside number. So I think that's not a bad, that's not a bad range. But if you're talking about three to four months and couple of cases and a year in other cases. Uh, wouldn't you say, doctor, would that be about right? Is it realistic to think, really, that a vaccine Well, you have the greatest companies in the world sitting around the table. I mean, Johnson & Johnson and Pfizer and all of the companies, Gilead, uh, you have all of these great companies, and that's what they're saying. So I think that, uh, I think we can make sure you get the president the information that a vaccine that you make and start testing in a year is not a vaccine that's deployable. So he's asking the question, when is it going to be deployable? And that is going to be at the earliest a year to a year and a half, no matter how fast you go. Do you think that's right? As you said, treatments have to be available before yeah, the vaccine. So that's why you well, have Well, I think treatments, in many ways, might be more exciting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. And that's what I think, and that's what I think Ambassador, Ambassador, Ambassador Burks, I think, laid out a really nice framework as we think about managing expectations, which is, be thinking antiviral therapeutics, transitioning to monoclonal antibodies, and eventually to vaccines as we think about the continuum of research and development here. Is that fair for CEOs? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I think, Tony, I think that's interesting because the concept of treatment in a certain way, especially when you have people that are you know, looking for treatment, they've already got, they're beyond the vaccine stage. That would be very exciting. And it always goes faster than vaccine because yeah. you're dealing with someone yeah. who's already sick. That's so right. the safety issues are going to be yeah. much, much different. Yeah. Yeah. And you will know your result almost immediately. Whereas with vaccines, it takes so, a so then, what would be your timing for treatment? Therapeutics, commonly known as, but I call it treatment. Yeah, what would be your number for, for us? We can think about producing 20,000 doses by the end of the summer of a tr course of treatment. Um, and as uh, Dr. Fauci said, you're going to find out very quickly. It's not going to be a mystery whether these things work or not. We're pretty confident that a mon our, ours is the monoclonal antibody approach. We think that that approach has a very high probability in the near term of delivery. Um, so, 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 so treatment, I mean, just for the media, so the treatment element of it goes faster than the vaccine element of it, which, in my opinion, in this case, would be better. Go ahead, please. Mr. Mr. I mean, the remdesivir, our medicine, is in phase three trials right now. And these trials are conducted very fast. I mean, we're talking about 30-day endpoints. Yes. So you recruit them. You know in 30 days, you know, once you recruit, whether it works or not. Thankfully, so far, the drug seems to be very safe. What we have to determine is its level of, of efficacy, its clinical effectiveness. Uh, and that, as I said, we'll know so potentially as early as as a treatment. Somebody is sick, they have the problem, well, Tony. Yes. It could be used. When do you think it could be used? Well, if the, if the trial that, that Daniel was talking about 
proves efficacy, which you likely might know in a few months whether it's effective or not. Yes. If you know by June that it's effective, then you just scale up and manufacture it and you're good to go. How good is that? See that, Jeff? That's good even by your standpoint, well, let me, Jeff. Let me give you an example, for instance, with, with the Regeneron product with Ebola. So Tony Fauci and his team uh, and the World Health Organization ran a historic forearm clinical trial in the war zone in Eastern Congo. And two of the products, one of them developed by NIAID, and one of them developed by them Regeneron, <clears throat> proved so effective that the ethical board said stop on the other two. I'm sorry, Dan. <laughs> one of them was yours. Um, one of them was said, <laughs> said, <laughs> said, one of them didn't work there. They said, and start treating. And when I went to the Congo, I got to see people that even before. Um, said, <laughs> said, one of them didn't work there. They said, and start treating. And when I went to the Congo, I got to see people that even before FDA approval are being treated. You know, in a certain way, this can bring the world closer. If you want to know, it can really do that. And uh, this too will end. Are there <laughs>